Here is a view of my game from three weeks ago. I had originally planned to let the main character Amy run around on an actual paper map with symbols and all. In the meantime, however, I spent some time thinking about what is going to happen on that map, what I want to show and how to make it look more interesting. And it felt like this map concept was getting in the way of how I was visualizing Amy's world. So I eventually gave in and changed to an actual world map. I still want to keep the visuals very stylized and paper-like. Some sources of inspiration I found are Carto, a beautiful indie game, the drawings from Disney artist Mary Blair, and the incredible style of the animated movie Secret of Kells. I've only sketched a few trees and buildings so far to play with the look, but yeah, I think I like that direction. Another decision I made was to go with a 3D view instead of the 2D isometric plane I had before. It's still very simple, essentially just a ground plane with a bunch of 3D sprites on top. That allows me some freedom in setting up view angles, zooming and how to layer things. So the Godot tip section at the end is all about putting 2D graphics into a 3D world this time. The card mechanics got streamlined a little too. My general idea here is to treat the cards as tools that Amy can wield and give her additional abilities in the form of other cards. So I brought that out by renaming the deck manager to toolbox and letting the player wield just one tool card. Amy gets additional ability cards when she earns experience points. Yes, there are experience points now. It's pretty amazing just by putting this little XP on the screen it starts feeling like a role playing game already. Development of the story itself is in progress. I've set up the overall storyline and I'm currently detailing the individual quests. Inevitably I find myself fixing and extending my procedural narrative system. I do have some pretty specific stories in mind and feel the need for more control and detail than the system I have is able to provide. Not quite sure where that is going yet. I hope I will be able to say more about that in the next update. As you see, things are still changing a lot and that's okay. When you're doing something you have never done before, there will be things you cannot know and consequences from learning those things. The real challenge is to not spend so much effort on, for instance, writing code and producing assets at this stage that you become too invested to change anything. Sometimes you may need to let go of that boulder and push it up another hill. So you need to make sure those hills are small but still high enough to give you a good view of the surroundings. Don't get me wrong, it's still tough on me too. I'm getting impatient, I want to see results to keep my motivation up and when those results don't feel right, I'm getting into a really bad mood. It seems to be a never ending up and down cycle. Well, I hope it does end someday. But now let's get to the Godot tip section. Here are my top three findings of the week. This first one is on creating polylines. The map in Amy's world features roads, which I had formerly realized as line 2D instances. There's no direct equivalent for producing wide lines in 3D, but the Geometry 2D class has some very useful methods here. This is how it works in a very simple test scene. There's a ground plane, the line geometry itself, which is a mesh instance 3D, and a camera to view things. So this is just going to show us the plane. Let's quickly run this so we see what it looks like. A wonderful white polyline. So let's go over the script really quick. My input data is an array of regular 2D points. To create the wide polyline we can use this wonderful function in the Geometry 2D class that basically takes this line and creates a wide polygon around it. To create a mesh that we can actually display in the 3D scene we need to convert that into 3D points and they need to be triangulated. So the first step is to create a new array mesh and a vector 3 array. To create a triangulation of the polygon that we have, we can use the triangulate polygon function in the geometry 2D class, which results in an array of indices that we can use for our mesh. Since we need um, 3D points, create a projection of that onto the XZ plane. And finally we add the resulting set of triangles to our mesh. And don't forget to assign the mesh to our geometry instance. 
Next up, rendering a 2D animation into a 3D sprite texture. In a previous video I showed how I implemented my player character as a skeleton 2D. To reuse this animation in a 3D context, I am now rendering Amy into an off-screen viewport and let that be the texture of a sprite 3D. The setup looks like this. In my map view I have a viewport that contains my old Amy 2D scene. That's just the plain old skeleton setup I had before. What is actually going to be visible in the 3D world is this 3D sprite here, which uses the render output of that viewport as its content. So except for creating those nodes, it makes sense to disable 3D on this viewport because there's only 2D content in it. And we want a transparent background. On the sprite, you simply create a new viewport texture and enter the path to that viewport. On some parts of my world map, I want the ground to look different from the default grass material everywhere else. I didn't want to resort to complex multi-texturing shaders, so I came up with a solution for layering textured patches on top of the ground plane. In a way, they blend seamlessly when overlapping. It's actually pretty simple to do in Godot. In this sample scene you see two of these patches blended seamlessly together. If we disable just one of these, you see what this is, is basically a disk of created from a few triangles and it has another ring of quads around it where the transparency goes to zero. And for the deformation, essentially this is just kind of a wobble generated from a sine wave that I use to push the vertices outward. Pretty simple idea, right? The scene for one of these patches looks like this. It's basically just another simple mesh that I create procedurally. I'm using vertex colors to control uh, the alpha blending. So that means you need to switch use as albedo on and to get the seamless texturing across multiple patch instances what you want to do is to switch triplanar mapping on using this checkbox and set it to world triplanar you can then scale the uv coordinates to your liking and also to get the alpha blending to work what you want to do is to set transparency to alpha I also use render priority minus one here to make sure this geometry is rendered underneath any other transparent geometry I have in the scene. So let's have a quick look at the code. Nothing really new here. I create an array mesh and create vertex arrays and this time a bunch of other arrays. The triplanar texture mapping requires normals. So I create the normals array. I use vertex colors to create basically the alpha blending values and of course we need indices. I won't go over this in detail. Um, this creates kind of the wobbly disk structure that I had explained before. So I create all of these vertices and as you see here the normal is just a vector that points upward in my in my case and the color of the outermost vertices are just set to transparent opposed to the inner vertices that are white. I create a surface from all these arrays and add them to our geometry mesh instance and here I also adjust the UV scale in code. And that's all I have for today. Let me know if you found these tips helpful. I'm basically just sharing what I find on my own journey. Anyway, hope to see you for the next update. Bye.